Praise ye the Lord. Was that awesome or what? Thank you so much. Pastor Eric and Joyce Burgess. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, if you got your Bibles today, we're in Romans chapter 8, and we're talking to you about the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Why is it when you come to the cross of Christ, something supernatural happens in your heart? Something supernatural happens in your life. I'm thinking about the benefit of Jesus Christ in your life. How many have given your life to Jesus? Raise your hand all over this place. Praise ye the Lord. Look at all of you guys. What happened? What happened? Where's uh, my mic? What happened? Angie, get up. Stand up. Stand up. You came to the cross of Christ. You came to Christ. What happened in your life? Well, the first transition that took place was um, I felt a peace inside that I had never felt before. And I tried everything before then to feel that peace. And it was that peace that I knew that it was something about it that I had been searching for that for so long that it put me on a journey to seek, was God really real? Because up till that point, I really felt like there wasn't a God that really loved me was the lie I listened to because of everything that had happened to me growing up. But in that moment, I knew there was something real because of that divine peace that I felt. And that's what started my journey walking towards whatever this is, I'm going after it. Because I did the same thing. We all have that mentality. When, when there's something we want, we go after it. But it felt real. And it was something genuine. And at that moment, I became the pit bull and grabbed a hole and pursued what, where that peace was coming from. All right. I understand all that. What happened in here? What, what? I, I, you live in a certain lifestyle. What kind of lifestyle were you living before you came to that T? It would be easier cross. to say what I wasn't living. I wasn't living a right life. Everything wrong. Uh, drugs, sexual promiscuity. What? Um, I was looking for my identity, acceptance, and love in anything and everything tangible here on earth. So when I felt that peace automatically inside... I did not want any of that anymore because I knew it didn't give me anything. And I began pursuing God and it started changing not just my heart and what I desired, but it began changing the way I thought. No longer was I bound by thinking I needed to get high to be somebody. I needed to sleep with a man to feel like I was worth something. Now I knew that because God was in me in that moment, all I needed was him. And if I pursued him, everything inside of me would become complete. And it did. So is this too strong? Do, do we need to hear it? So when we come to the cross of Christ... Does it do something on the inside of you? I don't know about you, but I was looking for fulfillment. I was looking for satisfaction in my life. And, and I looked all in the world for something that would bring fulfillment, something that would satisfy me. And the more I chased the world, the more I did not find it. And finally, I ended up in a lot of trouble and a lot of pain devastated and in my desperation and devastation I came to Christ in my pain and when I came to him in my pain something happened on the inside he took someone that was a drug smuggler or y'all out there an alcoholic a drug addict and took all of that out and offensed it meaning that I got the desire to do those things Came to the cross, made Jesus Lord and Savior of my life, and have no more desire to do drugs. Just that quick, gone. It wasn't anything that I did. It's all of what He has done for me. Now, I still got some battles, so don't, don't, don't get excited like you ain't going to walk through a little something, something, because 
God allows you to walk through things for your good. He says, uh, for your sake, you're killed all the day long. You're looked upon as a sheep to the slaughter. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just can't wait for that pain. <laughs> Pastor Harry, what happened in your life? Hey, is this all right? Yeah. yeah. The power of the cross? Yes. Well, you know, I was trying to think of how I could condense what happened in my life. But Angie said one word that captured it all. I found my identity. In life, we all have these different identities. It's really interesting because uh, the media is full of uh, images that people can relate to. And, oh, this guy is great. Oh, he's cool. Oh, man, she's really slamming. But the identity is in Christ, and he gave that to us in the very beginning. One of the things that's so exciting, well, not for people that are doing uh, crime, but the neat thing is your finger, your fingerprint. It's like a signature of God that's uniquely yours. So he gave you an identity, but in this world and through sin, our identity was lost. Right. It was hidden. That's right. And then when you receive Christ, all of a sudden, this identity comes in, and it's peace. He starts to work with you, starts to bring you to the place that he started to bring me, excuse me, personal, started to bring me to the place that he wanted me to be. And it's a journey. It's not done. He's still working on me, believe me. But I tell you what, I'm on the way. I have peace in the journey and I have joy as I go along. And guess what? I don't have to worry about anybody coming after me for the wrong stuff that I've done because now I have a desire and a push to move forward in the things of God, which are right. Against, there's no law whatsoever. Oh, man, that's where we're going to, Pastor. All right, just hang tight right now. Heads are bowed right now. Christians are praying. And I wonder if there's someone in this place today, if somebody that's watching us across the world, and you say, that's me. I've really been looking for peace. I've really been looking for a fulfillment. The, the things of the world could not do it. Money didn't do it. Money will set you up. You, you set a go for a certain amount, and, and then you attain it, and you say that I'm still not satisfied. Because only God can fulfill that void in your life. Maybe you're going through some pain right now, and... You, you need the Lord to comfort you. You need the Lord to show up in your circumstance. You need, need the Lord to do something great as a miracle in your life. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Would you just raise your hand? You need the Lord in your life. I see you. I see you all over. Yeah. You need the Lord right now all over. Now, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to pray before we get into our teaching today. I want to pray for you. If you just get out of your seat and come meet me and Pastor Eric... Right now up here, we're going to pray for you quickly, clap, but they're coming Amen. right now, they're coming. The Spirit of God is moving right Hallelujah. now, there you go, and God's going to do something great in your lives, and I'm so glad. Come on, keep clapping, they're coming, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, great, here they great, come. Great. All right, now I'm going to ask other Christians to come up behind them. And would Amen. you just put your hand on their shoulder to let them Hallelujah. know that they are welcome in the kingdom of God. Amen. And then we've got many people that are watching us all across the world. And now some of you are recommitting your heart and life to the Lord. You're rededicating your life. And, and that's all right too. Because God's going to give you a fresh start and do something great in your lives. Let's pray. Say with me. Say, Lord. Lord. Here I am. Here I am. Me. Me. By myself, by myself, before your presence, before your presence, me and you, me and you, and I ask you, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, to forgive me, to forgive me, come live in me, come live in me, by the power, by the power of the cross, of the cross, of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, from this day forward, from this day forward. I will never, I will never be the same again. Be the same again. Because of your presence. Because of your presence. And your power. And your power. That lives. That lives. In me. In me. In the person. In the person. Of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. And just wait just a second as the Spirit of God moves in your lives. Because this is about a friendship and a relationship with the Lord. Yes. The difference in the do's and don'ts 
and the Lord is, is that you have intimacy with the Lord. You have a relationship with Him, a friendship. Mm -hmm. And everywhere you go, He's your buddy. Yes. He's with you. He's going before you, behind you. He's protecting you. He's blessing you. He's speaking to you. He's giving you vision and wisdom. He's opening up doors and opportunities. The favor of God comes upon you through the power of the cross of Jesus. So not only does he change your heart, he causes your life to line up with God's blessing. So from this day forward, you will know in your heart that you are blessed. Everything you touch is blessed. The curse is done away with, and now the blessing of God comes yeah. into your lives right now, right this second. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And one more thing before you sit, sit down. In your heart, ask the Lord. Say, Lord, Lord. what do you want me to do? And just be still. Just be still. Now the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now about he, what He wants you to do. What's He want you to do, Larry? Share my testimony to help others. Good. That's the Lord. What's He want you to do? Um, I don't know yet. You don't know. Keep seeking Him. What's He want you to do? I just want to be the light that shines on the darkness. That's him. Praise the Lord. What's he want you to do? Become a man of God. Why? Because I have a family and people looking up to me. Nobody but the Holy Ghost, brother. Nobody but the Holy Ghost. What's the Lord telling you to do? He wants me to follow him and be a better father. He told you that? Yes, sir. I believe it. Praise the Lord. What's he want you to do? He wants me to love others like he's loved me. Yeah, that's the Lord. He's speaking to every one of you. What's the Lord want you to do? To be the very, very best version of myself that I can be. That's the Holy Ghost. And you know, how could have I talked to each individual person and told you all of that? You know what? I can't. But he can. And that's what he does by his Holy Spirit. What's he want you to do? Keep finding my higher power. All right. Who's your higher power? God. All right. Jesus. Yeah. What's he want you to do, young man? He wants me to put on my armor and keep it on and stop trying to hide it. Because we can't wear a mask, we gotta, we gotta keep our armor on so we don't get killed by the devil. All right, praise the Lord, you got victory. What's he want you to do? Take care of my family. Take care of your family. That's right. What's he want you to do, preacher? I don't know yet. You don't know. Keep seeking him. What's the Bible say he wants you to do? Serve the Lord. That's All right, that's it. So serve the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. You guys may be seated right now, and thank you guys for coming forward. There's the power of the living God flowing. Thank you, Lord. So I got great, great news for you. Romans, the book of Romans, is probably maybe the most favorite book of mine in the whole Bible. Out of 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament, Romans is probably my most favorite book. It always has been since I started studying the Bible 30-something years ago. And, and so today, we're talking about, last week I got you lost. You, you were um, sinners, and you were wretched, and none of you were righteous, no, not one. And you had a problem with your mouth, a problem with your brain thinking, problem with your feet. You just were, were no good, right? And then Jesus comes. Jesus is good, and Jesus brings his good and gives you his good and then you give him your bad it's an exchange program so then you become good in Jesus so we looked at that now I want to look at Romans chapter 8 three things that you can write down concerning this chapter as I studied it the first thing I saw was in Christ Jesus there is no condemnation no condemnation means that you are decreed and declared not guilty. Now look, you got to get this because as long as there's condemnation in your life, you feel guilt. You're guilty. What it does is, is it paralyzes you 
It causes depression to come into your life, and it makes you hopeless. So what happens in our lives, are y'all out there? So what happens in our lives when we don't understand the power of Christ, the benefit of the Lord, what happens is, is when we feel guilty in our life, it hinders us from being what Christ died on the cross and paid the price for us to be. It hinders the benefit of God in our lives. And, and so the first thing that I see in Romans chapter 8 is, is that if you've given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the highest judge, the highest court of the universe has decreed a judgment upon you that says, not guilty. Let me do it like a judge. Not guilty. One more time. Not guilty. So the first thing that we want to talk about today in Romans chapter 8 is, is when you're bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are no longer guilty. His righteousness has become your righteousness. His goodness is now your goodness. His life is now your life. That's the power that I'm talking about today. The power of the cross of Jesus Christ. It's a miracle working tea. It's not a T, it's a cross. And that cross represents the power of God coming into your life and becoming one with God. The next thing is, is there's no defeat. You can't lose with the stuff we use. In Christ, you cannot be defeated. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. You know, if I sweep a roach outside the house with a broom, I conquered him. But if I put my foot on him, I more than conquered him. <laughs> Somebody said, that is a terrible illustration. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. All I know is, is that that you are not only a conqueror in Christ, but the Bible says that you're more, come on now, more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And the last thing is, is no separation. That you cannot be separated from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. All right, so those are our three talking points today, our little PowerPoints, and we're going to jump into it. Are y'all ready? You were, verse 1. Verse 1 says, therefore. And when you see a therefore, you got to see why it's there. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, here's, here's what the Scripture says. The Scripture says that there is no more judgment. There is no more guilt. When you are in Christ Jesus, He paid the total price for you. So therefore, now you stand before God guiltless. You stand before God and cannot be judged. Listen, it'll be double jeopardy. Your sin has already been judged in Christ Jesus. Your sin has already been paid in Christ Jesus. Now, where you were under a law of death, sin and death, now you're under the law of the spirit of life that's in Jesus Christ. In Christ is life. Here's what Scripture says. It says, He that has the Son of God has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. And so the Scripture teaches us that by the power of the cross of Jesus Christ emanating from the heavens of God releases the life of God in you. So in Christ is His life and His life comes to live in you. Somebody said, well, how did that happen? Real quick. When I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, 
The spirit of the living God came to live in my spirit and I became born of God, born of the character, the nature, the life, the power of God. And now when I live my life because the Holy Spirit, God himself, lives in me, now God's life is inside of me living through me. And that's the, that's the revelation. So, so Jesus always follows the, the cross of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Holy Ghost only does what Jesus uh, says, and Jesus only does what the Father says. And so these three are in unity. These three are one, and these three are operating in your life to give you victory, yeah. victory, victory, victory in the name of Jesus. So for what the law could not do... Uh, in that, it was weak. Why was it weak? Because the law would tell me, don't sin. And the problem was, was I was a sinner. I couldn't help myself. I love sinning. I could not contain myself. Every time she walked by, I just had to dub, double look. What in the heck is wrong with me? Because I know that that's not right. I know that I'm doing things that I shouldn't do. In fact, Paul, setting up chapter 8, said, O wretched man that I am, who can save me from this body of sin? And then he said, I thank God that with the law of God, with my mind I serve the Lord, but my body serves sin. Therefore, it is no longer I that does the sin. And he says that the reason why is because he thanked God through Jesus Christ. In other words, the struggle, the tug of war that's going on in the side of me. One side of me wants to do good. The other side wants to do bad. There's a war going on on the inside of me. And Paul says, how will I get delivered, O wretched man that I am? What, what, how can I overcome this? And Paul said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. Listen, the law of the spirit of life in Christ will give you the authority and the power that you need to live a victorious life. Somebody said, wait a minute. How can I still have struggles if I'm delivered from the law of sin and death? You still got struggles because you are still a free mortal agent. You still got to make your mind up that you're not going to do certain things. God takes things out of your life when you give your life to the Lord. He supernaturally takes things out, but but some things he doesn't. Some things he says you're going to have to walk it out. Because I'm going to do something in your walk. I'm going to teach you something in your walk. So here's what happens. Here's the revelation. The revelation is this. That in Christ I have the authority. I have the power. Now it's up to me to tap into that opportunity to use the authority of God in my life. That's why the Bible says, be not conformed unto the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, you got to make your mind up that you're not going to do certain things. Somebody says, wait a minute, why am I struggling? Why am I still fighting this thing out? I'll tell you the reason why. Because you're still carnally minded and that's unto death. To be spiritually minded is unto life. You've got to make your mind up to get free from that stronghold. And until you make your mind up, you'll never get free. If you're still thinking in the back, you had a problem with alcohol and you're still thinking that you can drink a little Scott Todd just one, you're deceiving yourself. If you want to get free from alcohol, you got to say it's over. No more. I will, you tell your mind, you say, mind, you will never, ever drink again. And when you say that, it will release the authority that's already there. By the way, it's in you already. <laughs> the power's not coming. It's already here. I'm already in Christ. There ain't no looking over here and looking over there. Where's the power at? Where, where's God at? No, God's right here. Now you got to tap into him and release him in your lives. Are y'all alive? All right. So the law could never save any of us. The Mosaic law, the reason why, it was a, it's, a, it's a trick. 
In fact, law gives us the knowledge of what sin is. That's the whole purpose of it. It never ever was given to us that we could be good enough by keeping the law to be right with God. Because a, a perfect, holy, and just God, if you offend God in one area, one area you break the law, you're guilty, the Bible says, of it all. So all of us are sinners. And so the thing is, by the law shall no flesh be justified. Are y'all out there? So the only hope we got, in fact, law should be used to teach us that we need Jesus. Without Jesus, I'm doomed. I could never make it into heaven without Jesus because he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by Christ Jesus. Are y'all out there? Somebody, I heard you question me right there. You said, well, well, what about all those people that have never heard of the Lord? You better get busy. You better get busy. And let me tell you something. God is faithful. Many of those Muslim countries, the Lord has showed up in dreams and all kinds of things to, to show who he was. And, and so I've seen many people and heard stories of people in the jungle and stuff that you couldn't get to. And, and the Lord supernaturally revealed himself through dreams and all kinds of things. And they got saved. You get to the place and they're serving the Lord. And you wonder, how in the world did you... They say, oh, uh, uh, the chief had a dream one night and Jesus appeared and we all got saved. We've been serving the Lord. But my point is this is, is that God is faithful. But if there's something that you're supposed to do for him, can I get an amen? Then, then we got to do what God's called us to do. So the law then could not save us, right? It was weak through the flesh because my flesh keeps wanting to break the law. There's no power within myself to overcome. And so how do we become, uh, how do we fulfill the righteousness of the law? How is it fulfilled in us? Um, it's fulfilled in us that when we come to the cross of Christ and make Jesus Lord of our life, as I've said, He comes to live in us and gives us authority to become righteous and He gives us the power to live for the glory of God. So let's move on. Let's... Um, Let's um, look at verse 28 then. We're going to skip down. Here's what the Bible says. And we know that all things work what? Together for what? For the good to them that what? Love God. How I many you know you just got to love God? And to them who are called according to his purpose. So can I just tell you that in the Lord, God even takes bad things and turns it for good? I'll just let you know, some of the worst things that I thought ever happened to me in my life ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me in my life because God did something supernatural through that hardship. God changed the direction. God adjusted me in my heart. God did something to make me seek other avenues. And, and so... As a result, I, many businesses are, are started as a result of hardship. You, you know, did I tell you about how Velcro was actually invented? You know, the dog got loose and he got a bunch of cockerburls in his, in his fur. And the owner was trying to get the cockerburls out of the dog's hair. And he thought, man, if we had a product that stuck like these uh, cockerburls, and Velcro was invented. So, so the thing is, is, is your hardships often, oftentimes God uses them to do extraordinary things in our lives. Here's the word of God. For whom the Lord did foreknow. How many of you know he foreknew you before you were even uh, created? He knew you. He also predestinated you. I sent a little message out about predestination. What is predestination? Here's the question. Does God predestinate some people to go to hell and some people to go to heaven? Survey said? No, because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all come unto the knowledge of repentance, right? 2 Peter 3, 9. And so, the, so what does it mean to be predestinated? Here's what the Word of God says. He predestinated you to be conformed to the image of Jesus, His Son. 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Here's, here, here's what the Scripture says. The Scripture says that in the mind of God, he wanted all people to look just like Jesus Christ. So that's what we're striving for. That's why every time you look at me and judge me and you got, you're better than I am, you're looking at the wrong one. Jesus is who you need to be looking to. And just as soon as you can find some fault with Jesus, then you can go ahead and judge. Are, are y'all out there? Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he also called. Look at your neighbor and say, you called. And whom he called, he also justified. Look at your neighbor and say, you're righteous in Christ. Justified. And whom he justified, them also he glorified. So here is what the Lord says. The Lord says he predestinated you, he called you, he justified you, and he's glorified you. Shout somebody. Somebody said, well, well, what did you say? You're at all of that and a bag of potato chips too. He did it all. Yeah, he biggie sized it too. He said, Sir, would you like friend? Yes, give me the whole world. The biggest Coke you got, the biggest fries you got, and make sure you put all the meat you got in the freezer on it. I want it all. I want it all. He did it all for us. <laughs> so then, what shall we say to all of these things? What? Things, all the hell we're walking through. What should we say to these crazy things I'm going through? The pain, the, the circumstances, all the stuff that I'm walking through. Here's what we can say. If God be for us, who, who could be against me? Look, how about the cross of the power of of the cross of Jesus Christ says this, that God is your friend, God is for you, and everything you walk through in your life, God is there for you. If God be for you, who are you? Who do you think you are if God is for you? Listen, I told you you're guiltless. Come on now, you're declared not guilty in the Lord. That is so powerful because if you don't get a hold of that, you're going to be paralyzed. If you don't get a hold of that, you're depressed. If you don't get a hold of that, there's no hope. Jesus is the hope of glory. Are y'all out there? So what do we say to all of these things? That God is for us. And then if God's for me, who in the world could be against me? How do I know God's for me? Because he spared not his own son, but he delivered Jesus up on the cross to die for us all. And now how shall God with Christ also freely give us all things? Look at your name and say all things. Freely given. So we know that God loves us because God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That means that while I was an enemy of God, while I was separated from God, God in his mercy and grace and his love made a way for me to be saved. And if God did that for me while I was an enemy, how much more will he do for me as a friend? And who shall lay anything to the charge? Who will charge the elect? God's elect. Who will judge the elect? Who will come against the elect? Watch out. Because if you fool with me, you fool with God. Because I got all of heaven back in me. The power of the cross of Jesus. You thought it was a T, but no, it's a crucified cross. There's power. You, you made fun of me and mocked me and came against me. You thought you were fighting me. But you failed to realize I was an elect. I was in God's elect. And when you came against me, you came against God. Because he said, I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. So who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Because it's God that's made you righteous. And if God has made you righteous, who are you? Amen. 
That's why you can hold your head up, man, and walk around. And when people talk about you, blow them off. Man, you don't even know who you're talking to. Man, I'm, I'm in the body of Christ. Man, I'm in the house of the living God. God lives in me. You understand who you're fooling with? Thank God he's a God of mercy and grace because you'd be dead already. So who is he that condemneth? Who is that that judgeth? It is Christ that died. Rather than is risen, not only did he die, he got up. He got up. Boss, didn't we kill him and put him in the grave? Man, that guy got the stone rolled away and he didn't man, came out like a mummy, man. <laughs> he was, <laughs> that was Lazarus. Man, and this guy, Jesus, and when he prayed, he said, Lord, he says, I know you always hear me. I'm just praying for those that hear me pray that they know who really did it. Thank you, Lord, that you always hear me. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus jumped out. Unbind him. Set that captive free. <laughs> Set that captive free. So who is it that judges you? Who is it that's talking about you? Who's gossiping about you? Because it's Jesus Christ who died for you. And not only did he die for you, he got up. He was alive. They thought they killed him. But the problem is, is, is he said, no man takes my life. He says, I lay it down freely. And I have power to take my life back up again. Da, na, na, da. Can't touch this. Can't touch that. Da, na, na, na. Da, na, da, na. Da, na, na, na. <laughs> Look, can I tell you, not only did Christ, was he crucified for you, but here's the great news. He rose again from the dead. And, and, and he has authority that he can die and get up. Now, I don't, because everything I know is, come on now, it's got to begin and end. So I, I can't, I, I just, God, you know, in him is life. And he paid the price, and then he just put the life back in him, and he got back up. And this is what he promises. He says that same resurrection power. I'm going to release in your life. And so now you have the power of God that resurrected me operating in your life. I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. Come on now. He rose again. Who is even at the right hand of God. So not only did Jesus rise from the dead, now he's seated at, beside the Father in the third heaven. And now he's praying for you. Now he's standing in the gap for you. The Bible says he's interceding for you. What in the world does it mean that God that knows everything is praying for you? He's interceding. And the devil's up there too because he's a, a prosecutor. And the Bible says he's accusing the, the brethren day and night. So the devil's always looking for fault. If there's anybody judging, it's the devil. And if you're judging, you need to check your spirit. Because it's not the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit has declared you not guilty. So if you're declaring guilty, and let me just tell you something. He said, let the tares and the wheat grow together. So in the garden, how many of you know you got a garden? And how many of you know that God's planted the right seed? It's called wheat in you. But who you're hanging out with, your influences are planting other kind of seeds in you. And before you judge my garden, you better take a look at the seed in your garden. Because you don't know where I came from. You don't know what I've gone through. You don't know what I have fought. You don't know the call of God on my life. And so before you become judgmental and gossip and backbite and whisper and judge and talk to talk about somebody you better look in your own garden come on now 
because you might not be all of that yourself. And if there's any judgment, it's Christ that justifies. It's Christ that died. So if there's anything that needs to be done in any person, you need to let Jesus be the one. Pastor Jesus handle the counseling. Pastor Jesus to do the talking. Are y'all out there? So then who shall separate us from the love that's in Christ Jesus? And here's what God says. God says no tribulation will be able to separate you. No stress. No persecution. No, no lack of famine in your life. No lack of clothes. Nakedness in your life. No peril which is danger in your life. No sword. Come on now. If they get ready to cut your head off with the sword. Nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Jesus Christ. Because it's written... For thy sake you are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things we are more than a conqueror. Through Christ Jesus that loved us. For I am persuaded, and I'm coming to a close, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor death, nor any other creature, nothing in this world that's created will be able to separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Death has no more authority over me. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Not even death can conquer me. Because of the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, man, that man is crazy. You call me whatever you want. Hold my mule while I run around this church five times. I'm so happy to be saved. I'm so happy to have the love of God in my heart. I'm so happy to not be doing the things I was doing. I'm happy that I got the power of God in me. The problem is with the power of God is that sometimes I choose not to use it because I'm a knothead. Oh, don't look, yeah. But if there's any fault here, it ain't there. Because He's given me all things freely. So the Lord says this, that there is no more condemnation. Therefore, now there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Then he says that there is no defeat. In Jesus Christ, you cannot be defeated. The only way you can be defeated is if you defeat yourself. That's the only way. The devil has no more authority in your life. In fact, the devil can't do anything unless he gets permission anyhow. So if you go through a little something, just understand that God's going to use it. Because he said all things work together for the good to those that love him. And the last point is you could never, ever, no matter how many times you fail him, no matter how ignorant you are, no matter what you do in your life, you cannot be separated from the love of God that's in Jesus Christ. God will always love you where you're at. God will always meet you where you're at. You know, I had the story of Ruth. You remember Naomi and Ruth? I listened to those four chapters for, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 times. I don't know, lots. I listened to every translation, like message, living, read it and amplified King James. And I thought about Naomi because she went to Moab with her sons and her husband. And in a foreign land, her husband dies. Ten years later, her two sons died. They were married to some Moabite ladies. Ruth was one of them. And life had dealt her some hard blows. I know you've never gone through anything hard. And she started feeling bitter. In fact, somebody said, Naomi said, oh, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. 
because I'm bitter. God has dealt with me harshly. And I'm bitter. Ruth and the other daughter-in-law, she tried to tell both of them to go back. She said, look, I'm an old lady now. You lost your husbands. Go back and marry somebody in your own uh, country. I'm just going to go back where I came from, and I'm just going to live it out. She says, don't even look to me for any hope because I'm old now and can't have any more kids, and I couldn't have any more kids for, for you to marry. And if I did, would you wait all the years for them to grow up, to marry them, to have kids? So that's out of the question. She was looking at what's wrong in her life. Are y'all out there? Amazingly, the grace of God, she gets back to Jerusalem. And Ruth asks her, her mother-in-law, Naomi, said, can I go uh, glean a little bit of grain? We're poor, we don't have anything. And she said, by all means. And, and so Ruth went and started gleaning in a certain field. How many of you know God's just got a destination? God is setting you up for a comeback. God is supernaturally moving in your life. And so she's gleaning in Boaz's field. They don't even know who Boaz. Naomi done forgot the law of God. The, the rules of Israel and how God takes care of his people. If, if, if a husband dies, he wants the name to still continue on. So the next of kin, come on Jesus, will we'll, we'll adopt you and take you in and marry you so that you don't lose your, your heritage. You don't lose your name. And she, she gleaned in the field and Boaz came out and met her and, and told all the workers to make sure that y'all put some extra out. Just throw some extra for it. Make sure you let her drink at the, at the water uh, jars. And, and when we eat, make sure you let her eat with you. And she came back with a 30-pound bag of barley. Naomi like to fell on the floor. She said, where'd you, girl, where'd you get all of this? She said, I just got favor, man. I was in this guy's field. His name is Boaz. Naomi went, ding! Boaz! He's one of our next to kin. And then she got the revelation. Oh, yeah. God's made provision for us. Look what she told of Ruth. She said, Ruth, girl! You women are slick. She said, take a bath. Get some perfume. What? How many of you know guys, they know how to like dial it up, right? That ain't really fair to us. And she gets all fixed up. She said, put on your best outfit. Going to a place where they're a granary. Put your best outfit, your heels on. And when you get there, don't let Boaz see you because women love surprise. They want to sneak up on you, right? Guys, if you really want to do something great, sneak up on her. Do something unexpected. They love that. You know why? Because women live for an experience. Men live to conquer. And Naomi said, Ruth, when you get there, don't let Boaz see you, but make sure you watch where he's going to lay down and when they turn all the lights out and they lay down you go down and lay at his feet and then he will tell you what to do next shout somebody man oh Boaz rolled over man and there was there was a roof at his feet Ooh, ah! I said who are you and he says I'm Ruth I'm the next to kin Boaz says, blessed are you because you came and you found an older guy like me. You didn't settle for some young, good-looking guy. You chose to do what was right. 
You've taken care of your mother-in-law. Girl, I've been hearing all about you. You are a virtuous woman. And I tell you what, there's one that's ahead of me as a kinsman to redeem you. And I'm going to take care of business at the town meeting tomorrow. I'll bring it up and I'll get the guy and see if he'll, he'll buy all the property of, of, of Naomi and take you. But if he doesn't, I will redeem you myself. How many of you know Jesus has redeemed us? And the Bible says that when Ruth got back, Naomi asked, well, what happened? What happened? Quick, what happened? And Ruth said, the man said that he would have a meeting today at the town hall. And he would allow the first redeemer the opportunity to redeem us. But if he doesn't, he will do it himself. You know what Naomi said, men? And this is a word for you men. Naomi said, I know Boaz, that he's a responsible person, that he's a businessman. And Naomi said, Ruth, that man will not rest till it's taken care of today. And the Bible said that the other kinsmen said, uh, I'll buy, I'll redeem them, I'll take the land. And then Boaz said, oh, but you got to take the foreign woman too. You got to marry her. He said, oh man, that'll mess my family up. My wife ain't going to, I don't think she'd like that. I mean, you know, most women don't like bringing another wife in the house. <laughs> and immediately, <laughs> and immediately, he said, no, you go ahead and redeem her. And that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Boaz bought all of Naomi's land and married Ruth. And then the Bible says that, that uh, Ruth became the heritage of King David, who ultimately, through that lineage, came Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world that has saved us. So let me pray over you, Father. Thank you so much for Miracle Place Church and all of our people that are uh, I, I church all over the world, God, that are with us online. God, I pray your favor. I pray the Boaz blessing. Boaz was rich, Father, and he had the heart of God. He loved and he served God. So I pray, God, that you would cause the anointing of Jesus Christ, the same anointing in Boaz, and that anointing will flow to all of our people. You'll cause us to have, have raises and bonuses and increases in businesses. You're giving us ideas, Father God, for great companies, Lord. You're opening up great doors and great opportunities for us, God, so that we can be a blessing to be a blessing, Lord. So now, Lord, bless your people today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We love them and bless them now in the name of Jesus. Have a great, great, great day. Hey, we got some presents for some people too. So you guys that are here for the presents, this, uh, I'll put you in the the seats right here to my right and uh, we'll be with you in just a minute give somebody a hug as we go home today